Why run a virtual machine on Kubernetes? Does it actually make any sense? Well, funny enough, it actually does. You have the ability to move away from the data center where, well, rather where VMs are running. You have the ability to move away from other services and run those workloads that are running on virtual machines right where you're running your containers and where you're orchestrating your containerized workloads. You have the ability to bring it all under one roof versus having to manage multiple different pieces of infrastructure, multiple different platforms. You can manage one platform and utilize it in multiple different ways. Hence, Kubernetes has the ability to run both virtual machines and containers. So in this video, let's go ahead and take a look at how to run kubevert, which is the method of running virtual machines on Kubernetes, and we're gonna see it from start to finish. So right off the bat, I have some directions here. And the first thing that you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to install kubevert. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, pop open the installation link here, and I am going to run az aks get credentials namespace aks environment 01 devrel as a service. And as you can see, I'm running an aks cluster. So kubectl get nodes. We have our nodes right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to pull the latest version of kubevert. And then I'm going to install the operator and the CRDs. All right, and then if I just run kubectl get ns, we can see I have that kubevert namespace. kubectl get all namespace kubevert. All right, and we can see everything is just about running as expected here. Couple more seconds and yep, there we go. All right, everything's running. And the next thing is we have this prereq page. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna pull up the web browser here. And one of the things that we're gonna to have to install is the containerized data importer or CDI. And what that is, is it's a persistent storage management add-on for Kubernetes and its primary goal is to provide a declarative way to build virtual machine disks. What does this mean? It means that I'm gonna upload an ISO, okay? So I have the ability to upload this ISO here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run the configurations necessary. This command here, bringing down the latest version of the CDI operator. Well, yes, well, the latest version rather. Right. And then I pull down the operator and boom. All right, so kubectl get service. Oops, sorry, kubectl get on s. All right, CDI, kubectl get service, namespace CDI. Now you notice here how we have this upload proxy. This upload proxy is what we're going to use to upload our ISO, okay? So let's go ahead and open up the port forwarding for the ISO, or rather for the upload proxy to upload the ISO. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload a new Ubuntu ISO. So I've downloaded the Ubuntu ISO. You can just Google Ubuntu server download and you can download it. Right. I'm going to give it a PVC name. This is the persistent volume claim that's going to be created to house or store my ISO. I'm going to give it a specific size. And then the, well, rather the storage class, this is obviously going to change based on where you are. I'm running on Azure right now. And then the upload URL, which is right here based on our port forward command. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cd into my downloads because that's where vertctl is and that's where my ubuntu instance is and i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to copy this and i'm going to run it okay and as we can see here it's creating the pvc and then it's going to start uploading the iso for us all right and as we can see that's started here and it's going to take a little bit because it's you know uploading two gigs, so depending on your upload speed, it could take a little bit longer, could take a little bit less. And once the upload is done, you'll see a message that looks like this. All right, so you can just go ahead and leave that, or you can even just you know CTRLC and exit it out. So the ISO is now uploaded. Okay. 
The next thing that we need to do is we need to create a PVC for our hard drive. So, you know, any VM, it needs a hard drive to store that persistent data. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to run that, okay? So now we have that PVC. And the next step, run the VM. What we have to do at this point is we have to run this Kubernetes manifest and the Kubernetes manifest is gonna to point to the kubevert custom resource definition, the operator and the object or resource or kind, whatever you like to call it as a virtual machine. And then we run this configuration here which does a couple of things, but essentially the gist is it configures the CD, which is the ISO, and then it configures the virtual hard drive or the PVC that's going to be used at the hard drive. Now, one very, very important thing to keep in mind is this boot order. For the boot order, the ISO or the CD, right, whatever you wanna call it, uh, must be number two and the hard drive must be number one. The reason why is because if the CD-ROM piece, the ISO, is boot order one, every time it reboots, the VM reboots, it'll keep trying to go to that ISO, it'll never go to the hard drive. Okay, so now we can go ahead and we can run the configuration. We'll run CD, I'm just pointing to the path of where this VM is. All right, kubectl, create minus F, ubuntu.yaml. And now kubectl get vm right, we'll do a watch on this okay and boom as we can see it's actually already literally up and running okay so the next thing that we can do is we can connect to it okay so to connect to it i'm going to do vertctl this is just the vert i just didn't put it in my path that's why it looked this looks this way but if you put it in your path it's just vertctl for the command vnc and then my VM name is Ubuntu server. Okay, and as we can see, that is now up and it is getting ready. And here it is. We can officially start to configure our VM. And that's how you can get an Ubuntu box running, even a Windows box, whatever you want, up in Kubevert with, of course, the underlying platform being Kubernetes. Thank you so much for watching.